My name is Bruce Cosbab. I'm the chief architect at uh, the systems part of Fluke Networks, uh, which is now part of NetScout. Um, today we're going to talk about TrueView Live, which is a, a new product that Fluke Networks launched, um, again now NetScout, uh, last May. Um, so we're going to get into the details of that. Um, before I get started, I just want to quickly introduce the team here so that you know who you're talking to if questions come up. Um, over there is Brandon Shannon. He's our engineering manager and DevOps manager for TrueView Live. Uh, we've got Thomas Dumas. He's the product planner for TrueView Live. Um, in the back of the room, we've got Betty Braden Navarro. She does all our wonderful marketing work. Um, and then behind, uh, on the table running the computer is uh, Jason Chafee, who's our product manager. Um, so today we're, we're going to, so we're going to get down in the details of TrueView Live. I'm going to first introduce NetScout and tell you a little bit about who NetScout is. Uh, and talk about the acquisition of NetScout uh, and Fluke Networks. Then we're going to get into the details of TrueView Live and we're going to talk about how it works, what it does. Um, along the way, we're going to do uh, several demos that can, that's going to demonstrate exactly how, how that looks. Um, and, um, and so that'll, that'll be our day. So to get started, who is NetScout? Um, uh, I'm guessing that most of you have heard about NetScout. Uh, NetScout now is the, the market leader in both uh, service assurance and cybersecurity uh, with, the, with this acquisition that happened last year. Um, they've got a substantial footprint in, in, um, in, and are the market leader in terms of um, uh, revenue. NetScout serves uh, both enterprise and service provider customers. We've got thousands of customers in both those segments. Uh, we've got um, products being offered as a service we've, uh, in service providers. We've got products that are operating in the service provider core. Um, and we've got literally tens of thousands of uh, enterprise customers, network technicians, network engineers, um, network owners using our products. The flagship product of NetScout is Ingenious One. Um, it's a service assurance platform um, that monitors and instruments the IT infrastructure to monitor application network um, performance. Um, it monitors applications uh, as well as unified communications. With, with NetScout now, um, we're, we're a worldwide organization. Um, we've got sales, support, services worldwide um, in uh, many custom, uh, countries around the world. Uh, and we now have over 3,000 employees uh, with this acquisition and, uh, and $1 billion in revenue. So the last year was a big year for NetScout um, with, with what has happened. Um, in terms of the acquisition, um, last year NetScout purchased four companies from the test and measurement platform from Danaher. Okay, Danaher is a, a large holding company. Um, that consisted of, uh, I don't know, 75 or 80 companies. One group of those companies was the test and measurement platform. Fluke Networks was part of that group. Uh, NetScout bought that group from Danaher. And uh, as an aside, Danaher is, is subsequently splitting this year into two companies themselves. So this was part of a, a bigger move. Um, in terms of what was acquired by NetScout, um, Fluke Networks, which is where this group came from, um, was acquired. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do. Um, also, Arbor Networks, uh, which delivers uh, both service provider and enterprise um, security monitoring. So their main area of expertise is uh, DDoS, Distributed Denial Service. Um, and they operate in, in most of the largest carriers uh, in, in the world. Tektronix Communication, um, they build uh, customer care um, uh, for, uh, for mobile carriers, um, uh, monitoring for performance and quality uh, of, that, uh, of those mobile carrier uh, networks. And then VSS Monitoring provides packet broker solutions. And um, so NetScout took all of this, created one big company. So these four companies, along with the old NetScout, the original NetScout, we've combined. And we are now working on um, putting this all together in a way that, that gets even more value out of these individual companies. 
Okay. Um, any questions about that? Um, okay, so in terms of Fluke Networks, Fluke Networks has two primary product lines. Our portfolio is, is split into essentially two, two components. One is the systems part of our business. Uh, our systems business consists of uh, Visual TrueView, TrueView Live, which is what we're going to talk about today, and Air Magnet Enterprise. Visual TrueView is, uh, is a real-time monitoring system. It's, it, it performs packet-based analytics, packet-based monitoring, um, as well as flow and SNMP collection. So it provides a, a, a view of your application network performance typically deployed in the data center. TrueView Live is, a, is an active test-based system. Um, it was our new offering that we launched last year that, um, uh, that is a, a cloud-hosted service, okay? And Arab Magnet Enterprise came through the acquisition uh, of Arab Magnet by Fluke Networks in 2009, and the Arab Magnet uh, product line consists of several, in addition to um, Arab Magnet Enterprise, but it, it provides performance and security monitoring of your WLAN infrastructure. So the other part of our uh, product portfolio consists of our tools. And these, are, these tools are probably what most people are familiar with. Uh, we've got quite a collection um, to suit every type of user and every job that's done um, from our Link Sprinter, which is a, a $300 tool, to, to our OptiView, which is a $25,000 tool. Um, and they appeal to a wide range of skill sets. We also have um, uh, Wi-Fi capable tools in here as well, so you can troubleshoot your, your, uh, your Wi-Fi networks. Um, as I said, most people are familiar with these. These are not to be confused with the old Fluke multimeters. And one of the first things people say to us is, well, I used to have a Fluke multimeter. Well, that's, that's a different thing. Um, but, but, uh, but being part of Fluke, um, it's got such a wide ranging um, right reach with that name, people often confuse the two. But, but these tools are to the network what those multimeters were to uh, electricity. Um, so when you take these products, you combine them with NetScout and you combine them with um, Arbor, we've got tools for virtually every type of user and every type of customer, every type of network owner and operator um, uh, on the planet. And, uh, and we literally have tens of thousands of, uh, of customers among these. And I would guess with the deployment footprint that, that our companies have across these products, um, that, that somewhere along the line, every interaction you've had today or yesterday was probably looked at by a piece of NetScout gear now, um, either from a security point of view or a performance point of view. So, um, so that's, that's put the portfolio. Um, so let's get into TrueView Live. So TrueView Live is a, is a hosted monitoring service that, um, that helps IT operations, network support people, um, telecom uh, people monitor the availability and performance of their application and, uh, and VoIP services. Uh, it consists of two primary components. Uh, one component is what we call a pulse, and that's what you've got sitting in front of you. And by the way, um, we're going to show you how to use those. Uh, you won't need to get those out of the box, but you can if you want. Um, but those are yours to keep. You can take them home, um, plug it into your home office uh, or your home network or, or wherever you are, and, uh, and start monitoring your performance to uh, the applications that you use. So, um, so the, uh, the first component is uh, a pulse, and the second c component is the, the hosted service itself. The only thing that you need to worry about is, is the pulse. Um, these pulses are active agents. They perform synthetic tests or active tests against applications and networks. Uh, currently, TrueView Live supports two types of tests. It supports web, uh, web applications and, and VoIP. In, in both cases, the idea is that it acts like a user uh, in, in those situations. There are three types of 
pulses. They're hardware pulse um, and a virtual pulse, which is a software version of this. It comes in Windows and Linux. Um, and then we've got what we call a, a global pulse. And these are pulses that we've deployed in the, in the cloud um, that uh, we operate on our users' behalf and manage those. And, uh, and they perform the same function as the, the uh, hardware and virtual pulse. A couple things I want to point out about these. One thing you'll notice about this TrueView Pulse is it's got one opening on it. That, that is an Ethernet port. It's a one gig Ethernet port. Um, it's, it is where it gets its power. So this device must be plugged into power over Ethernet. You just plug it in and, um, and, and away you go. So with the, that's how easy it is to deploy, to deploy this thing. It's also small and light, which means you can send it out to uh, somebody in the mail and have somebody who's non-technical plug it in for you. So it takes uh, very little to, to, to deploy this thing. Uh, one example that uh, we have with this is, is getting visibility into uh, classroom and online testing services. So, um, so with this, you can send it out to a school. Uh, the teacher can just plug it into the classroom and um, and, and, uh, and then you have visibility into that classroom. So it is very easy to, to deploy. Um, with the virtual pulses, uh, a, a, as you might expect, they can be installed uh, just about anywhere on a laptop, a desktop, a server. Um, the advantage of those is that you can instantly push a pulse out to somebody who happens to be on the road or at a home office. You need to troubleshoot. Um, um, it's very easy to deploy. Brandon's going to show you how that works. Um, and, uh, and then when you're done with it, you can automatically um, undeploy it. So um, it's all centrally managed. And then, of course, the global pulses provide the visibility from the outside of your public facing assets. So when these pulses operate, they perform their tests, they push all of the results to the, the hosted service in the cloud. And being a hosted service, um, it has all the benefits of a hosted service. You don't need to worry about installing a server uh, or deploying an application in your data center. You just sign up and, uh, and deploy a couple pulses and away you go. Um, so um, Brandon is going to get down into the details about exactly how this works um, and show you, uh, show you what it does. Um, in terms of the problem we're solving, um, it's, it's all about this notion of the evolving hybrid uh, enterprise. And this is something that we've seen, um, and I'm sure uh, many of you have seen this uh, dynamic over the past few years. And the, the issue is that with the op adoption of cloud services, of SaaS applications, outsourced IT, um, IT doesn't have uh, visibility or control of the environment. And we've seen this over and over again. Um, and, and one dynamic is, the, is shadow IT, where business users purchase SaaS applications on their own without IT involvement. involvement. The way it used to work was when you deployed a business application, IT would get involved, there'd be a big planning process um, with a database team, a server team, data center team, network team, and they'd all get, it, get in a room and, and, um, and make sure this project was carefully planned. But with SaaS applications, businesses can purchase uh, purchase their business applications without involving IT, which then causes problems down the road because now IT isn't prepared when there are problems. And we've seen this happen over and over again. Um, the other dynamic is, is what, what I call the blame game. There are more people involved now. Um, not, now it's not just the server team or, or the database team. Uh, in your enterprise, it's at least one, if not more, uh, service providers in the mix. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, complexity and reduced visibility. So that is the problem that we're trying to address with adding this type of uh, measurement capability to our portfolio. Um, our, pro our customers told, have told us that, hey, I've got all the tools in the world uh, that I need for troubleshooting problems inside my network. Uh, my, my big worry is what's happening outside users using public applications over public infrastructure. I still need to help them. What do I do? Um, so here's some questions that TrueView Live can help you answer. 
uh, am I getting reliable cloud ser or reliable service from my from my service providers, whether they're SaaS applications, cloud, or or, or VoIP? Um, can my business users access these things, um, uh, these applications and services? And uh, is the network doing its job? So um, those are the primary problems that we're trying to solve with this. We've got many customers that are that are using this tool. Um, We've got a global supply chain company who's building all their applications on Microsoft Azure, which, uh, which had a global outage about a year and a half ago, a big deal. Um, this particular company did not realize the, there was an outage until the Microsoft VP called them, called the CIO of that company and apologized. So needless to say, the network team uh, was, uh, was embarrassed by that and and they, do, they needed visibility to make sure that they were uh, informed before that happened again. With the schools, a big dynamic happening in, in schools, uh, in K-12, in the United States at least, is, is the digital curriculum, where, where schools are going to online testing, um, online grade book and, and classroom management, and um, and especially with online testing, this has become a big issue because we're putting a lot of pressure on these kids to take these tests in a certain time frame. When they're filling out their answers and hitting next and getting a blank page, what do they do? So they're stressed, the teacher's stressed, and uh, so this is a big business impact in terms of education. And uh, we've had um, one, one example of uh, a school using Global Scholar, um, which embeds encyclopedia uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, which also demonstrates another dynamic of this SaaS environment. A SaaS is just not one application. It's multiple applications. Uh, and then going back to the multiple parties in the blame game, well, <clears throat> if you have a uh, performance problem, it may not be with Global Scholar or, or Salesforce. It could be with a service that they are using. And, uh, and that was the case here. Um, the other, another example of a type of customer that we, are, that we have um, is on the service provider side. So we've got a, uh, a large hosted VoIP provider building up a service using TrueView Live for assuring the, the performance and availability of their VoIP service. And they're selling this to their customers. So now their customers can purchase that VoIP service and they can also monitor it. And that helps it helps the transparency on both sides. Um, and so it, it, it's very interesting to this particular service provider, I guess for, for a lot of the reasons that you might imagine, just in terms of um, customer satisfaction and retention, um, being able to troubleshoot problems faster. So um, last thing I want to leave you with, um, we've got uh, uh, our, our, our marketing message is, is we are the guardians of the connected world. And um, so we've got this thing called the Guardian's Guild. And, um, and, and the notion of a, a guardian is, is somebody who, who protects the, the proper operation of the network so that as we get up every day and go on with our digital lives, we can function. And so I invite you to join the Guild. It's a, it's a, a group within LinkedIn where, where people like us can talk about the problems of the day, um, but go ahead and do that.